My name is Martin Hiller. I'm the Director General of REAP, the Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency Partnership. We are a funder, but we are also a data and information manager uh, in the field of clean energy. And so the assumption that I'm going to put forward now, and I think the assumption that we all have in this room, is that we need a rapid transformation of the energy market to clean energy. And how can we make this happen? Somebody talked about a booster rocket this morning. Uh, and uh, I don't have the whole booster rocket. I wish I had. But I have an element of that booster rocket. Uh, when we look at the example of the, of the mobile phone market, the expansion of the mobile phone market, 30 years ago, mobile phones were chunky big boxes in cars of the few hundred or thousand of the very richest people in the world. And if you look at all James Bond movies, they always try to come up with the, with the best and newest of new applications, but they, they never figured out that one would have a smartphone. Uh, so what is in, interesting and important when you look at the enormous growth curve of the mobile phone market, one very important element in that was that outsiders of the market came in. It wasn't the traditional phone companies that drove this development. They actually had to jump onto the development very quickly in order not to lose the contact. So these market outsiders are important. And for the energy transformation, we somehow need to do something similar. We need to allow outsiders of the market, apart from the traditional <coughs> energy companies, to come into the market and work that. And how can we make that happen? Uh, we think that one essential component is information. Information, put in a very simple way, consists of data. And data are uh, either facts or figures, individual pieces. These are the elements. And then to, they together can create uh, information. And information is then being transformed into understanding, into insight, into knowledge. That's a kind of logical chain. Uh, so when we look at the energy market, a lot of data exists. But there are two drawbacks. One of them is data can be expensive. And the other one is that data very often are housed in very different places, in silos, and not really speaking to each other. But if we can free up this information flow, and if we can free up energy information, make it available and accessible, this is an essential part of the booster rocket. It's stimulating the market, bringing new market entrants, and just making this whole discussion and the possibilities much more lively. And the good news is there are two, there are two uh, new developments in the market that both contribute to this opening up. The first one is known under the, under the concept of open government data. And it's an interesting thing because in this case, it's a government movement assembled around a simple declaration which governments can sign. There is no treaty, there is no obligation, there isn't even a legal body uh, pushing this. It's just a kind of voluntary way of governments to engage and then there is behind that a, a manual in the list where governments can, can basically choose and say what they are going to do in terms of uh, opening up their government data. The principle is that data that have been established with public money, using public money, should be publicly available. There may be some limits to that in some places, but in principle that's the idea. And it's a pledge that governments sign called the Open Government Partnership. There are over, <coughs> a 50, over 50 governments have signed up. The whole process was started about four years ago by the US and the UK. And uh, initially, it was more industrialized countries who joined this movement. And meanwhile, a lot of developing countries are coming on board. Uh, emerging economies like Brazil or Mexico uh, or South Africa, but also in Africa, um, Kenya and Ghana, who are the first ones actually who really kind of moved and created in sub-Saharan Africa uh, open uh, government uh, portals. The gain that governments see is in econ economic activity because there's a recognition that data are actually useless if they're not being used. They don't create, they only create economic value when somebody does something with them. And so the idea of putting this data out and let the market decide what applications to build out of those data uh, is behind that thinking of opening up government data. 
The second innovation in this field is in the field of the World Wide Web. Now, some of you may be in my generation and they may remember what happened when the World Wide Web was developed and when suddenly there was this possibility to hyperlink web pages and therefore you could you didn't have to tell a story in a linear way anymore. You could actually link to somewhere completely different in the middle of a story. You could suddenly kind of uh, create a whole network, a whole web of information. Uh, that was an, an incredible revolution of the way how we communicate and how we, uh, how we uh, talk to each other and how we retrieve information. Uh, the the power of a new development now is to do the same thing with data, with facts and figures. So you don't have to go to a different page. You can actually take each individual element on a page, in a database, on a web portal, and link it to another one. And what that allows is that you can jump over the silos. You can take, uh, let's say, energy data from a state in India plus a uh, uh, agricultural data from the FAO plus uh, other data and retrieve new information about bioenergy potential. You see, so you can go into different sources. If you want to see an application of that, then go onto the website regal.info, R-E-E-G-L-E dot info, -E -E and look at the country profiles for clean energy there. This is a web portal that we are running. REAP is running that web portal. And it's probably at the moment the biggest web openly accessible <coughs> web portal on this kind of information. And we are using linked open data in order to bring the information on the countries together. So together you have open government data and you have new uh, systems in, on the internet that allow to link data together. You can now start to provide very comprehensive, very essential information to a much broader group of people than those who have access to those data today. And we think that this is one of the elements that the booster rocket will definitely need. Thank you. Thank you very much.